All right, my friends, I'm being rollable right now. Do not throw up in your mouth. This is the culmination of a hot mess of about eight different projects I've been working on in my makerspace, in my house. And so while I've decluttered the office for the work and the writing, you can see that uh, I've sorted and sifted and tried to meet deadlines for various projects. I have left myself with a huge mess. Not all bad, you can see I got my tubs labeled and things like that, which we'll dive into. But I just wanted you to see um, and keep it real with what I'm doing that what I have here is a monstrosity. So I'm not sharing these tips as if I am perfect because I'm not. I'm sharing it with you that I'm going to upgrade this space. I've already upgraded quite a bit with the storage trays and this tool wall which we'll dive into later but you can see oh good lord do I have a lot to go through. So here we go let's welcome ourselves to the hot mess of a journey. Friends how you doing this is Coffee Chug. I'm here with the next episode on managing your maker space. Now I showed you I was vulnerable I showed you my current basement maker space which is an absolute mess. It's very overwhelming. So what we got to think about is going through the space with intention because I know what many of you are thinking. If you get rid of everything, then how in the world can it be a maker space or a workspace or a learning space, whatever, whatever flavor you're of your adjectives there. And we also have to be careful that we keep things that we know are going to be useful, such as like arts and crafts and supplies, things that are constantly being pulled out and used over and over again. You can never have enough of that while also acknowledging things that we have purchased and brought into the space that are not bringing value uh, to the overall learning experience. And so those are things that um, we need to consider. And it's a very fine line. It, there, there's a balance to it. But I know, much like when I decluttered my garage this summer, that when I would come home from a very crazy, hectic day, and then I would park my car in the driveway because it wouldn't fit in the garage, and I'd get out of my car. The first thing I did, I have to walk through my garage, and I had so much stuff in there that my crazy hectic day, magnified by the crazy hecticness layout, the physical space in my garage, to get into my house. And that entryway, that that full pattern, you know, makes its way into your house. And so the next thing you know, the living room feels that way, and the kitchen feels that way, and your bedroom feels that way. So we need to think about that in terms of our own learning spaces. We all know in education, we have crazy hectic days all the time. And the last thing that you need after a full day of teaching and leaving a meeting that is crazy and hectic and maybe frustrating and challenging is to walk back into your space and see it completely in disarray, see it very overwhelming, um, and all that does is just escalate those feelings, those negative feelings to that next level. So, I understand the struggle of, of letting go. It's the reason why my own space is a mess. But we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this together, and we're gonna help and support one another. So, let's get into my first rule of what I'm gonna be using when I'm analyzing my space. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and I'll show you some things here in just a minute, is Something I've been saying about 18 million times in my own home is we are decluttering and minimizing quite a bit. Um, we just recently got done using or getting rid of and taking a look at like blankets and sheets and comforters um, as well as all our clothes. And we just kept filling these bags and it was tough. But I just kept saying, it is gone. It's gone. And say that jokingly, but after a while it felt really good to say that and then actually throw something into the garbage bag or the donation bag to Goodwill. And so I think that's the, the phrase we're going to be using in this first part is, it's gone. That's what we're going to be doing. So the first thing is just to kind of walk through and just look for things that are just truly trash. You know what I'm talking about. That we've convinced ourselves is not trash. So, I get it friends, 
we can find a purpose to every single material object found on the face of this earth. But we have to be real. Our space is limited. And when we start to accumulate trash, we got to take a step back and get rid of it. So we're going to do that first. So, I've already started here, my friend, and I just keep telling myself, it's gone. That's my hashtag, right? It's gone. And so we had to get rid of things. And, and a lot of these things, when I say trash, I mean, like, they really need to go. Um, but it's not like just picking up a scrap of paper off the floor. So, like, this here was something that uh, my youngest daughter and I made for one of her school projects. We spent a lot of time making this, and we had a great time because we were building and learning and we actually created this really awesome owl nest. I don't know if you can see that, but I was really, really impressed with her work um, as a second grader to make this come alive as part of her scene. We don't need it. She doesn't play with it. I've held on to it as a memory, but you know what? It's gone because the memory needs to be here, not represented through some scrap wood and cardboard. I also had this. This was for a project that I helped uh, my wife for a school project. And I ended up making this awesome spray painted circle that I was going to do, do um, something with, right? Like we all have things like, oh, I'm going to do something with that. Well, it sat in the corner of a shelf for the better part of eight months now. Um, and while it's awesome, it took me forever to cut a perfect circle. And it took forever to get a nice even paint coat on it. I'm not using it, and I don't need it, so it's gone. And so these are the things, these are the things that I'm talking about as I think about trash and getting rid of clutter. Um, other things that I need to do as well, I kept, I've kept this TV box thinking, man, this is awesome. It's thick cardboard, nice big panels. I'm going to do something with this. Well, guess what? I've had the TV for a year. I have yet to find a project for it. It occupies a huge amount of space. So, guess what? It's gone. So, these are the things. So, these are the things that I want you to think about. What are these things that we're holding on to that need to go?